Uh, my son, a few years ago, asked me, uh, his colleagues asked him, uh, Why, what does your father do? And he said, well, my father sleeps too much. That's what my father does. <laughs> and then uh, a few years later, he asked me, why is the government after you when you sleep so much? Uh, I feel like I need a good nap now, but I have to share my story with you. And uh, I look back at my own past, and then I see the questions I had posed my mother. Uh, in, um, I must have been 13 when she was arrested for bartering two kilos of sugar. Uh, and then she was taken to court and uh, tried and convicted for, as an economy saboteur and was being sent to prison when she decided to hold a protest in court. And for two days she slept in court with two small children and the, the judge had to release her. And then I thought, how did she do that? But my main question was, how can we be in a country that espouses socialism, talks about equality and all these good things for the people, when uh, poor mothers are being arrested for bartering sugar? Because under socialism, the economy was uh, um, centralized and we had a system of rationing. And then I realized the everyday abuses against citizens. Uh, most importantly against the poor or those who were not privileged. And at the same time, I also realized how those in power had the license to take away whatever they wanted from the state, to loot the state. And I grew up with that uh, critical mindset of uh, the injustice that that system uh, brought about. But I then realized when we moved from uh, Marxism, Leninism to democracy, that the people were the same. So it was not about communism or about democracy or any other system. It was about the people in power. And they were looting and we were at civil war and people just kept looting and looting and looting. And then I decided to take that as my cause to fight against corruption. And in 99, I wrote an article uh, the lipstick of dictatorship in which I called the president uh, corrupt and a dictator, and I was arrested for that. As I spent time in jail, I realized the scale of uh, human rights abuses uh, in jail, but also something that uh, called my attention was uh, the, how the prisoners were very supportive of me as they knew I was a journalist. And they came to share their stories with me because they said you will be released and you will be able to tell our stories. And one of the stories was uh, I was walked into a cell that was called the Jewish cell where every single day a prisoner died. And I wrote, uh, uh, before leaving jail, I started uh, releasing those stories to friends who visited me. But most importantly, when I left jail, I made sure those stories got in attention in the international media. And I was able to get an article on CNN explaining uh, the, about this Jewish cell and about also a prisoner who was close to me and as a punishment was uh, made to sleep with three dead bodies for three days. Uh, and that's when I became known as a human rights activist. And I'm still called a human rights activist. But the important uh, factor that I continue to pursue uh, is corruption. And why corruption? Because from 2007 to 2010, uh, the IMF um, reckoned that Angola had $32 billion missing from the state accounts. And very little was done about it. So I decided to target those responsible for corruption. And not only I started um, exposing corruption, but I also believed and came to understand that when we talk about the rule of law, when we talk about justice, it's how citizens perceive it. 
and corruption in Angola was made, uh, was institutionalized in such a way that uh, people tended to believe that it was a way of life, it was normal, from the petty corruption to the grand corruption. And to attack that, uh, I needed to address uh, the legal system and challenge the legal system. So for each case I exposed, I also filed a criminal complaint against those I exposed in the story, whether the president, uh, his daughter, or generals. And uh, in 2011, I wrote a book on human rights abuses and corruption, uh, in which I exposed the business dealings of nine generals. And then I lodged a criminal complaint against them for uh, corruption and crimes against humanity. And then, of course, after a year of investigation, uh, that was turned against me, and I was prosecuted for that. But what was important about my case last year, I'm a convicted felon, by the way, uh, and I was convicted last uh, May last year, uh, was the international uproar it caused. And the several organizations, even governments, decided to support me at that time, and so the generals, instead of just saying, look, we will send you to jail, at some point they called me to negotiate a way out of the situation. And uh, from that on, I learned that we have the power as citizens to challenge those in power, but it is really important that we set an example. And in this case, when we talk about the rule of law, how do we set that example? How do we become the example in bringing up cases against the authorities so that individuals understand in society what it takes uh, to enforce and to s establish that culture that calls for justice. Um, for instance, now I'm back after so many years uh, reporting on cases of prison abuses. And uh, from October last year up to now, I was able with my articles to have a number of individuals released from jail. And I started exposing cases of individuals who have been on preventive detention for eight years. And in two particular cases, the articles made it to The Guardian in the UK. And that sort of international exposure as well helped to put pressure on the authorities to release uh, these individuals who were basically innocent and rotting in jail because they had been forgotten about the system. So, in a nutshell, uh, what I do, and just to respond to the question of my son, how do I cause so much trouble uh, to the government while sleeping? It's because I mostly work at night when everything is quiet and my minders are not at my doorstep. And uh, while I'm working through the night, during the morning I see him off to school, and then I go to sleep, so my minders get very bored because they don't have anything else to do because I'm sleeping. Thank you. Thank you.